Hey, did you guys watch last week's weekly update? Because if so, you're probably not going to have a ton of surprises here. I think I've been hit by that dreaded S word. And I don't mean shit, I mean slump. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update as we are rolling on through July. And thankfully, it is a non-Malazan month. So when I get hit with this thing that people call a reading slump, I'm glad it's not a Malazan month because uh, then basically that would be the only book that I read for the entire month. But guys, lots of new things going on in the channel. Uh, yeah, what I'm reading is very, very slow. But there are other things that I want to talk about. So I hope you will continue to watch the weekly update, even though you know what I'm reading. Let's go ahead and do that, guys. What am I reading? Well, I am still reading Demon in White. And I want to clarify, uh, I mean, look, I probably made 100 pages of progress since the last time I showed you guys this. Uh, I want to clarify that um, it has nothing to do with this book. Uh, I've had a lot of people on the server thinking that I'm saying I hate this book. I think I'm just in a uh, that space right now where I'm just uh, I'm, I'm just struggling to really read anything. Uh, lots of real life things going on right now, and uh, work's been very very busy since I started this new position. So uh, yeah, it just kind of cut into my personal time and stuff like that. So uh, I, I know that uh, a lot of people were like, "Wait a second, you've been like a champion for this series." You are saying no, definitely not saying anything bad about this series. Obviously, uh, I think that this book is fine. I'm just you know right now it's I'm struggling to find the uh, time or want to to sit down and read for longer than like 10 minutes outside of Berserk and The Sandman, which are the other two things that I'm reading. Berserk by Kentaro Miura, obviously. I'm about to hit volume 20 on that. I have no idea how long the um, the Conviction arc goes on for, but that's kind of where I'm at right now, volume 20. And Sandman, I'm still in that first, that first trade. I just... And like I said, guys, it isn't just uh, reading that, uh, I mean, just books that I've been struggling with right now. It's just, uh, it's, it's just slow going. Like I said, lots of crazy things going on in the real life. And it does happen sometimes, but you know, I'm pretty sure this week we'll probably pick back up as things get a little bit more to normal. When you start a new position, you kind of got to refine that work-life balance and things like that. So I think that's kind of what's happening to me at the moment. Let's go ahead and move along to what am I going to read? Well, obviously, going to keep working on Demon in White. I uh, got to hope I can finish it next week. Uh, Berserk and The Sandman will also continue. Like I said, those are just kind of fill-ins for when I have time where I don't feel like reading an actual book. Uh, but again, for the rest of the month, guys, all we got is Sphere by Michael Crichton. That's part of the uh, the what July reread for Michael Crichton. And of course, the second Poppy War book, that is the Dragon Republic. So I don't see any problems unless I do get that uh, advanced reader copy of uh, the, the last first law book. Um, then maybe that uh, this schedule will just look even crazier then. And I bet you that would help me get out of my reading slump because, I mean, that's that's Joe. It's my guy, right? But, uh, yeah, that's really all I got going on right now, guys. I don't plan on picking up. I don't I don't see myself blazing through this in the next few days like I, like I tend to do sometimes and uh, then picking up like four other books and be like, you know what? I got time before we start uh, Midnight Tides on August 1st. Let me see what I can throw in here. I don't see that happening. But you know, you never know. On a week-to-week -week basis, things can change and um, I don't know. Maybe they will. Let's go ahead and talk about this week on the channel. Now, I, I do know that this week was kind of like the house cleaning for the first half of 2021 and also kind of setting up the second half. And what I mean, guys, about like real life is uh, insane right now. Is my wife had a major surgery, so she's been kind of laid up. So it's been, um, uh, my, my mother-in-law is staying with us. And guys, I don't know uh, what it's like when your in-laws are over, but uh, basically if you leave the room for longer than five minutes, they hunt you down to ask you what you're doing. Uh, so I knew I wasn't going to be recording any videos. So all the videos I had up this week, guys, were stuff I, I recorded over the weekend. Uh, so uh, this is the first chance I've actually had to get in front of the camera all week. Uh, so because basically um, once I get home, she bails. So uh, yeah, then, I'm, then I'm playing nurse and uh, and taking care of the, the babies all alone and stuff. So yeah, uh, things have just been very, very busy at home this week, obviously. But uh, happy to say she's doing well and she's in recovery. So, you know, no complications. It's just it's a, a major surgery that uh, you have to stay off your feet for a while afterwards. So there we are. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about what I did do this week. I did my June wrap up like I always like to do at the end of the month. That always generates lots of conversation when people get to talk about their favorite book of the month. I think that always uh, starts a lot of conversation. Mine was Project Hail Mary, in case you didn't watch that video. And uh, a video that I'm still struggling to find a way to review on it. Uh, right now I'm struggling to find the time to do it. Uh, I did my summer 2021 TBR. 
Uh, like I like I said previously, I feel like a lot of other channels will do one every month. Me, I feel like season's the best way to go because it doesn't change a lot. I'll add some stuff, but I rarely take anything off if we don't have something big like that Malazan schedule that got shuffled. So uh, I, I imagine more things will be added to there, just depending if uh, you know when I get my groove back here in, in, in reading. But uh, I, I'm not worried about filling out that, that schedule with other things. Uh, I know like Sci-Fi September, like I originally had, I've got down to like three books now. Uh, if I can actually get through those at a decent speed. Uh, I'll probably be adding more. Like, I'd love to read the Bobaverse or something like that in there for Sci-Fi September. That'd be fun. But uh, uh, lots of people interested in that Dune reread I'm going to be doing. And uh, If you're still one of those people who's holding on and haven't decided to read Dune yet, I will be reading it in September if you need someone there to guide you and hold your hand, if you will. Uh, join the Discord. Join the Discord, and I will help you every step of the way. What else? Uh, I talked with Moid from Media Death Cult this week. This is something we've been talking about doing for a while. Uh, I've retroactively called I retroactively called it the Eminem Show, with Mike and Moid. But I, I titled the episode that we talk about nothing because we really we we just said we both have worked in podcast backgrounds. Let's just turn on the microphones and see what happens. And that's what it was. We were just kind of shooting the shit for two and a half hours. And uh, I'm surprised you guys, so many of you have watched it. <laughs> I thought that'd be a video that would be lucky to break a thousand views. But uh, we were like over 5,000 last I checked. So uh, I hope you guys were mildly entertained because uh, I, I love talking to Boyd. Uh, he is ever the gentleman in his own way. And uh, <laughs> it was a fun, fun conversation, especially when I... Uh, this would sound really bad when I railed on Moby Dick and he defended it, but you know these things happen. Watch that, watch that two and a half video for that like one minute uh, conversation that I'm, that I'm talking about there. But a lot of fun. I want to try to have more conversations on the channel with other content creators. I think it's just a, a lot of fun to kind of just you know, like I said, just kind of bullshit with uh, with people, and not really have anything in particular to talk about. And then I did uh, my halfway home video, as I call it, which is the best of the first half of 2021, which is a lot like my my monthly wrap up. That's why I didn't want to try to put it the same, you know, back to back with my June wrap up because it would kind of seem like a similar video. It's that similar format I use for the monthly wrap ups, but I go through everything that's been going on in the year. But I added other things, like I did my top 10 books I've read so far in there. I did like my three biggest disappointments and things like that. My most popular videos, my favorite videos, why some of those have been my favorite videos, and things like that. I always think it's a fun peek behind the curtain of how a booktube channel gets run. But uh, you know, you guys seem to enjoy it. It, it always generates a lot of conversation. Uh, and that's what it's all about: getting that conversation, seeing what you guys are reading, what you're watching, what you're listening to, what you're playing. It's always a lot of fun to talk about those things. But it's always a lot of fun to talk about next week's plans and let's do that now look i'm gonna be straight with you here i know i've been dropping the ball on this lately i used to be like i would not make it in this weekly update if i knew i was not going to have a chance to get it and it seems like every week now i keep saying oh, i might do my spoiler talk number two for house of chains it just never happens because guys it's just that those take a lot of work <laughs> you know i gotta try to remember everything that i read because that's the first one i didn't take notes for so that might be the shortest spoiler talk that i do yet so sorry if you're really really counting on that what's going to happen i just don't know when i am i just i wouldn't want to do it and just be completely like i don't know anything guys you drop in the comments and tell me you know so i always say uh, quanti uh, quality over quantity. Almost did it backwards there, <laughs> but uh, it, it will happen eventually. Uh, I, I just I, I know I've been really dropping the ball on some of the stuff lately. But these are some of the things I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to do this week. I'm going to get out my Congo review because we are getting close to the time where I got to read Sphere, and I should have got Congo's review out last month real life you know so i'll get the congo review out uh, i'll probably go ahead and do my book haul for june which i got just the most cherry gift guys i can't wait to talk to you about it if you follow me on instagram uh, i talked about today but just an amazing amazing gift from my good friend Le the theo thank you so much you really you make my dreams come true but uh <laughs> that's not how that song goes at all is it any any hall raisers out there okay Flash poll. Uh, I did that flash poll. Well, a very good friend and a moderator on my Discord, Madison, has a great uh, booktube channel of her own. Check her out, Madison Goodyear. I'll link it below. Uh, she compiled all of the votes for me on my flash poll on what you should read, the next one that I'm going to do. And it was close, guys. It was very, very close. So I uh, thank her for uh, for taking the time to do that and saving me the time from doing it. And I'm just going to kind of do like a follow-up and talk about, you know, what one uh, how many votes everything has, stuff like that, because uh, I don't know. I think that those are fun conversations, and I just say that I, I was pleasantly surprised with the results, guys. Uh, not just because of the winners, uh, the winner uh, winners, uh, but um, that it was such a good mix. I mean, there was no point where just with the eye test you could tell a clear-cut winner. It really was a very good mix, and I'm very, very surprised 
at some of the things I had on there that I thought would just be filler that nobody would be interested in that got a lot of votes. So I'm excited to talk about these things. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to decide that the, the, the order these these slotted or the way that I, the, the order that I'm going to actually do because I'm going to do all these eventually why you should read within the next year. But uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do them in the order that they were kind of uh, done on there. But I might. I don't know. We will see. We'll see. Just kind of how, feels like how things are flowing. But again, thank you, Madison, for doing that. It was a really, really helped me out. Uh, I'm going to start a new series uh, on the channel, guys. It's called A Stephen King Palaver. And I know you're like, oh, more Stephen King content? Yes, always more Stephen King content. But what this is going to be is I said I want to start more conversations with other creators on here. So what I plan to do with this is every month I'd like to have a guest on that is a big Stephen King fan. And I want to kind of talk to them about basically, you know, why you love Stephen King, what are your favorite books, how have his works influenced your life, you know, just a, so just a couple of King dorks just, you know, kind of geeking out together. My first guest will be Sarah from Sarah Reads, another awesome booktube channel. I will link that as well below because she has a fantastic channel. Very, very big Stephen King fan. Uh, my first guest was supposed to be Jaime in Fuego, but uh, from the horror show, we've been talking about doing this forever, but he's a big, big Phoenix Suns fan, and the Phoenix Suns are in the NBA Finals right now, and I'm like, hey, I know that your mind is completely dominated by this right now. Let's let's get together in August. So, uh, yeah, that's my plans there uh, for, for Sarah in July, Jaime in August, but me and Sarah will be doing that video sometime next week, and uh, I'm obviously looking forward to picking her brain, because uh, I had a great time talking to her on Phillip's channel about Dark Tower, and uh, I'm looking forward to just kind of a one-on-one -on -one now to kind of see just how much we can dig into the multiverse and talk about everything that makes it great. And guys, I think I'm going to do a top 10 video next week. And I'm kind of uh, kind of listening to the people here. When I've been doing these Berserk videos, I get so many recommendations. And something that everybody warned me about is they said, be careful. Once you finally start reading a manga, you're going to get so many recommendations, you're not going to know what to do. So I'm tired of telling people, Okay, yeah, I've got it on a list. I've got it on a list. I have decided I'm going to do a top 10 of the manga that I want to read after I finish Berserk. And I'm going to do it by preference. So uh, that, that that will make it fun. It's not just going to be 10 random ones. It's going to be by, by my, my power rankings, if you will, of what order I want to read these in. But I narrowed it down to 10 that I'm really, really interested in just based on what I tell them. I'm not going to be able to tell you very much about them, guys, other than like a blurb because I don't want spoilers on these things. But of all the ones that I get recommended, I write it down. I do a little bit of research. Uh, I do a little pricing. I do a little bit of price checking because uh, a lot of these are not cheap. Uh, but I'm doing most of them on digital, you know, but uh, it, it's 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 something that I feel like I've kind of been red pilled on. And I want to kind of talk about that a little bit because, uh, you know, for the longest time I was like, I have no interest in manga. And you're never going to change my mind. And uh, first off, so I think I'll eat a little bit of crow and then I'll talk about those 10 series that I want to read. And I think it'll uh, just open the door for me to get uh, recommendations for everything except the 10 that I list in that video. But I think it will be a lot of fun, especially for the new viewers that have jumped on the channel exclusively for my Berserk stuff. I, I think that that's a video that maybe they would enjoy. Like I said, I like to listen to the people and they want more manga content. So love it or hate it, guys, I am going to be doing a little bit more. Uh, I don't want to be worried about this channel becoming like a manga channel or anything like that. Sorry if that's what you're wanting it to happen. But uh, my, my, my long time watchers, don't worry. It's it's not going to be anything like that. Uh, it's just uh, something that uh, I would like to talk about because uh, I do feel like I've got a lot of good recommendations. And uh, like I said, I feel like my eyes have been open a little bit on this uh, on this little kind of subgenre that I want to talk about and for those reasons why. But there are a couple of uh, not book things, guys, I want to talk about before I go, and that is TV and movie talk. I always love doing this section. There's a little movie that came out on 4th of July weekend on Amazon Prime called The Tomorrow War, starring Chris Pratt. And uh, I don't want to get uh, too, you know, on my soapbox about this. Basically, guys, for the last handful of years, if critics absolutely hate a movie, uh, I, I figure it's probably going to be something I enjoy. Uh, I, I don't know where this separation between critics and audiences really started to happen, but I don't remember any time in my life it's been just completely opposite like this. I mean, you look at all these scores all the time, and you'll see like the critic score, and you'll see it'll be like in the 40s, and you'll see the audience score, it's like in the 80s, and then you'll see a critic score, it's like 95, and the audience score will be like in the 30s. So I was like, I have no idea at what point we became this detached. And I obviously this isn't everybody. This isn't speaking for everybody. But for me, it seems like while that's not always the case, it seems like more than not uh, when critics absolutely love something, 
Uh, I usually dislike it and vice versa. When they're absolutely just hating on something, I usually end up liking it. Look, The Tomorrow War, was it an amazing movie? No. Was it a good, fun, summer popcorn flick? Absolutely. It, it was an alien shoot-up movie. I mean, I see people going into it and like nitpicking it. And I'm like, guys, were you really expecting like Schindler's List out of an alien invasion movie? I mean, really? Uh, to me, it was uh, Chris Pratt. I think he's a he's a fun action star. He can hit the comedic notes. He can do the serious stuff. Um, I still enjoy Chris Pratt. I can't wait for Guardians of the Galaxy three. Uh, I still love to go back and watch reruns of Parks and Recreation. So uh, yeah, uh, Chris Pratt shooting aliens. Sure, sign me up. Uh, I thought the, the J.K. Simmons on that was just awesome as always. So uh, I say, hey, recommend it, guys. I love. I want them to keep putting these major blockbuster movies on streaming because. Yeah, I like watching stuff from my sofa and not having to worry about, oh, the movie theater sounds messed up or they left the lights on or that somebody's kids are making too much noise. I got enough problems with kids making noise. I don't need to hear yours too. But that kind of depends on you. But hey, I think it's, a, if you just don't take it seriously, like I said, it's just a popcorn flick, guys. It's one of those things, it's like, look back on Independence Day that everybody has the nostalgia for now. It was just as corny when it came out. It's an alien invasion movie, guys. Don't be expecting Shakespeare with an alien invasion movie. And I think you'll have a good time. Uh, I, I enjoyed it a, a lot. Uh, Ivan Strahovski was very, very good in that too. She's uh, but she was she played Sarah on that show Chuck. She's just awesome. I love her to death. Uh, she was in Mass Effect too, by the way. Uh, they put out the story trailer for the uh, relaunch. I guess the sequel to He Man and the Masters of the Universe. This one's just called. Masters of the Universe. And you might think, oh, well, that's a red flag. You know, look, guys, uh, I'm not going to do what you think I'm going to do, and I'm not going to just sit here and, 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 and complain about stuff. Uh, let's just say there's a lot of rumors going on about the show. There have been for like the last year. And Kevin Smith has been out in front of it the whole time. Kevin Smith, yes, he is the showrunner for this, and he's denied a lot of them. He's been caught in lies numerous times now about this show. So there was a lot of these rumors going out. He had been steadfast that those rumors were not true. And now the story trailer came out. And they look like they're true. So again, if you want to know all the negative stuff about this, there's lots of channels out here that focus on this stuff. Here's what I'm just going to say. As someone who grew up watching He-Man the Masters of the Universe and had a bazillion He-Man toys as a kid, because I am a Gen Xer guy, that, that, was, that was it for me. He-Man was everything. G.I. Joe and Transformers were there, but He-Man ruled everything, right? So yeah, I was interested in this. I, I love the idea of sharing this show with my children and stuff like that. Uh, I just tried to ignore the rumors, and now that I see them, look, when I was growing up with He-Man, I, I, I loved Tila. Tila was awesome. Uh, He-Man, Duncan, and Tila, that was like my Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman. That was my trio. You know, Those were my heroes. So I'm definitely not one of those people that you're like, oh, you just don't like women or something. Yeah, I know where these conversations always end up, and, and that's not what it is. I'm just saying that uh, the rumors about the show basically were He-Man's going to be sidelined on his own show, and it's all going to be about Tila. Um, I was like, that, that cannot... There is no way that Kevin Smith would do that to the fam. There's just no way. And now that trailer comes out, it looks like it's very much true. So um, I, I, I believe in giving things a chance. Watch it before you complain about it. Um, it it's just, I, I don't know. I don't know how Kevin Smith would ever live this one down if that ends up being the case. Because you guys don't understand that that fandom is still huge. And if they really do that to uh, Prince Adam, I think there's going to be a lot of upset people out there. And it'll just start that same war like Star Wars has started, you know, about you know, man babies and stuff like that. that you know, the same old stuff we always hear. Um, I'll just say to me, as a Masters of the Universe fan uh, growing up, I, I would be really sad if that's what happens to the show. Um, if it's like for a couple episodes, cool. But if the whole show, that's 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 the plot of it, that's, that's going to be very upsetting. And uh, I'm going to give it a chance. I'm going to watch a show with completely open mind. But if that really is what the show is, I don't think I'll be finishing it. So fingers crossed, guys. I really, really do want this show to be great. Because, like I said, I'm a fan first and foremost. I am never one of those who's like, oh, I'd rather be right. I could care less about confirmation bias. Uh, I have been trying to ignore those rumors for a long time. Because I've been very, very hopeful for this. So I hope that, uh, yeah, it does turn out... Uh, pretty good. So that's about all I've got for this week, guys. We're planning on watching uh, that Fear Street trilogy that they're putting out on Netflix. It's based off the R.L. Stein books. I never read R.L. Stein, but I knew a lot of people in uh, junior high and high school that were reading R.L. Stein. Uh, I did. I always assumed that he was like a uh, like like Goosebumps or something. It was like kind of for younger audiences, but I guess not because this trilogy is coming out on Netflix and it's it's R-rated. It's three movies: uh, 1994, 1978. 
1666, based off of his uh, his book trilogy of the same name. But uh, it's really cool. They're releasing one on July 2nd, July 9th, and July 16th. So that's a really, really awesome thing. I love, like I said, I love these streaming services dropping these full-length movies and stuff. I think it's just great for people like me who are like, it's, you know, I take the whole family to the movie theater. We're looking at like $75, you know. So uh, it's great to just watch it on our monthly fee for our streaming service, you know. But guys, that was my week. What is your week like? Go ahead and drop in the comments. Tell me what you're reading, what you're listening to, what you're playing, what you're watching, all that good stuff. And have yourselves an awesome weekend.